I think um, education is the foundation of living a great life. That's my, my company's name is uh, Learn and Grow Rich. And the, ah. reason I, the reason I named it that is because there's no other way to get rich other than reading a book or, or watching a video or learning from your mentor. There's there, like I, I did the, the mental gymnastics around this. And that's the only way to get rich is go learn something. And the more you learn about it, right, the more you can charge if the market is in demand for it. And it's like, it's not a secret. But, you know, having a career, making the money, working the hours and not feeling fulfilled. What would you say? We haven't touched on entrepreneurship, have we? <laughs> well, I, I would argue, way. I would say this is the reality. What well, everything we're talking about is the reality of entrepreneurship that oh, yeah? very few people want to dive into because mm -hmm. it's scary. They want to talk about web pages. They want to talk about, you know, Sales conversion funnels. rates and, you know, all of this other increase in profits, ROI, right, and stuff you like know, that. all of this, stuff, which we have to, that is a hard mm -hmm. skill. You have to understand or know someone that understands. But if, if you can't put this very complex, uh, formula together, I mean, you're not going to, I, I will never retire because I, I was here to, to bring value to the world. And I love what I'm doing. I agree with that. It's like retire. I've tried, I've had the opportunity to, to quote unquote retire. And I was depressed. What, I was like, what am I doing? What's it? What am I? I was sitting on a beach in Dominican Republic. Literally. I was like, I would cheat yeah. everything I wanted. And what am I doing? My coach was like, you just need to figure out what's next. Zach. So I just keep asking myself what's next. Right. And you know, I also believe at the same time, that we all have to go through our own suffering to get to the happiness, which why happiness, way, all that is such a, a an amazing place, and um, you have to earn it. You have to earn it. And I mean, I, I can tell you, there's plenty of times I've been crying, crying on the floor, not knowing what to do, uh, just like ready to quit. But you know, I just keep persevering and persevering and persevering. And that's why he said, like, the struggle brings the joy. And, and I'm a big believer that happiness is a destination, or I'm sorry, a direction, not a destination. I just keep, you know, I just keep working on it every day. And, and, you know, just trial and errors. And that's why I think so many people fail at this is either A, they're afraid to make this, or uh, B, the, they make the wrong step and then they just quit, right? And they can't figure it out. And one of my mentors, so this is a beautiful uh, uh, explanation. He goes, he goes, all you need to make money is a bank account and a way to, uh, accept payments if you can't figure the rest out with google entrepreneurism isn't for you where are you by the way i'm in medellin colombia south america oh that's nice puedes hablar what's that puedes hablar Poor, Can you I, speak? Uh, no, 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 no Spanish. My no. wife does. My wife oh, really? uh, is Puerto Rican, and so Ooh. I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh, learning. <laughs> My guy. No, you're the one that's winning. Puerto Rican wife in Colombia, traveling the world. What's that like, really? What's that lifestyle like? It's uh, it's a dream come true. In the sense of, you know, this is this is what I started it all. God, I'm 38, 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up on a small town uh, in a small town in Indiana, and I just said I want to travel the world, to help people make money, and then I just started working that for it. And four years ago, you know, when COVID broke out, three or four years ago, I can't remember now. Uh, we were in Arizona, in a big office, you know, two to three hundred people. Um, and they made us move online in a week. And about six months of that, I was working out of my apartment. And I said, you know what, honey, we don't have to be here anymore. And we went to Hawaii for four months and uh, tested it out, you know, because it was the only place that would take us. And then we started traveling nonstop 20 plus countries later. Um, and so the traveling is beautiful and we, we were just over in Asia for six months, Thailand, Bali, and then we did a week in Italy. We spent some more time over in London and Dubai, but that side of the world is tough for strictly the time zones. If you're running a business on the United States. And so we came back over here to Colombia, and, 
you know, to be frank, I just want to settle down for a minute because we've been going nonstop for four years. And so we've, we're here this is my fourth month. Uh, we're going to buy a house and, you know, just sort of settle down, but at the same time, still travel, but have, uh, we're gonna buy a house and a farm here in Colombia, and then a house and a winery down in Argentina. Uh, we got a house in Puerto Rico and one in Arizona and sort of just bounce in between. Mm-hmm. So you're settling down means living in four different countries. Throughout <laughs> <the year. laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. And you know, what's nice about it is having mm-hmm. my own, we want to buy a place so I can, I, I live, you know, we, we start scale and sell businesses. So I'm always online uh, with my teams. And so having my own office, my own setup at every place it goes is extremely important for me. So, uh, you know, just mm-hmm. being able to, to have that is going to be what I'm excited about. Have my own podcast recording studio in every place. And that's, that's the one thing that sort of is challenging if you do run a big team like I do. I've been thinking about it. And I'm wondering, when I travel, how would getting a podcast going work? Like, how do you even do it? Because you're not only traveling, running your own podcast, you're running a rather successful business and you have a large team. Like you said, you just had a company retreat off grid and you not only are doing it, you're excelling at it. So how do you even get it to work like from one task to the other from one business or commitment to the other how do you even get it to work well so for me it was like first off you have to know what work looks like what does working look like and then you just you know you just put one step in front of the other in front of the other in front of the other like when we first started off and our, our first travel was to Hawaii. So that, uh, that meant I had to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. And that, that sucked. But, you know, living in Hawaii didn't suck. So I figured it out. <laughs> and, you know, it, it wasn't the best backgrounds. It, I didn't have the best internet. I didn't have the best gear. But I, I still just did it. And so what I used to do was try to be perfect about everything. And today I'm just like, let's just do it. And then we figure it out and then we get better and then we get better and then we get better and then we get a new camera and then we get a new microphone. And that like you, what you're seeing in my setup right now, I just got this in Columbia because I didn't want to carry all this stuff around with me. So prior to this, I had, you know, more compact gear, but it wasn't as good as gear. And so, you know, you just, you just start in, in what I would tell people is the adventure and the story of the travel is far more important uh, than, you know, what you <laughs> what you look like on the camera, you know, in your background or whatever. Cause you can, I mean, you can go do a podcast from a park somewhere anymore, mm-hmm. right. With the gear that they have. And so I think the mm-hmm. mental obstacle of having it perfect is what really holds people back. I know it did for me for a long time. The thing that I'm hearing and I'm in thinking mode for a bit, the thing that I'm hearing is that at first you were the perfectionist trying to get everything to be so perfect. Uh And that's not it anymore. What has been the difference in level of success between the two mindsets? The two mindsets being, ah, it must be perfect, get everything spick and span up to the highest standard verse. And you know what? Let's get going and let's get good at it while we're doing it. What has been the different levels of success? Because it can't be the same, could it? Well, I think there's nothing that can replace experience. And so there's some things that do need to be perfect. And there's some things that just need to be done. And the experience helps you disseminate which one is which, right? And so for me, you know, shooting a a video, yeah, I want it to sound good. I want it to look good. I want it, you know, but am I going to have, you know, the the top line, all of that stuff? No, because it it just doesn't make sense for me. Now, when it comes to, you know, paperwork, because we buy and sell businesses, we buy and sell real estate. You know, we do a, a, a lot of, uh, we raise a lot of capital. That stuff has to be perfect. Like every everything needs to be perfect, right? And so there, there's places that you just need to move. And then there's places you can't move until it's done the right way. And the only way you're going to know that is through experience and, and mentorship. <laughs> Excuse me. And I have a lot, I mean, I, I have 45 people in 11 countries on my team. 
And so I have experts that are experts in their criteria and I let them manage that. That's, you know, that's how I'm able to do what I do is I just, I focus on my, my gift, which is, you know, getting people excited about the vision. Uh, I'm, I'm really good at finance. I'm really good at conversations at uh, talking to people. Now I used to not be, but I've, I've worked on it over the last 20 years. And so just delegating, but the challenge is, is, you know, in the world of business is you hear all of this stuff I'm going to be saying today. The challenge is, is once you reach a certain point, if you don't, you know, you need to do the thing at the right time, right? Not just do the thing, but if you do the thing at the wrong time, it'll mess up. Right. And so as, as you get more and more successful, timing is important as well. And, you know, just trial and errors. And that's why I think so many people fail at this is either A, they're afraid to make the step or uh, B, the, they make the wrong step and then they just quit, right? And they can't figure it out. And one of my mentors, so this is a beautiful uh, uh, explanation. He goes, he goes, all you need to make money is a bank account and a way to uh, accept payments. If you can't figure the rest out with Google, entrepreneurism isn't for you. I was just like, Boom, like that's, it's like, just figure it out, figure mm -hmm. it out. And, and that's why I think, you know, these podcasts are important. That's why I think your mentors are important. That's why I think the education and the books and the YouTube videos and all of that uh, education that people do is, is so important because you just have more resources to figure it out. I was saying, I agree with you because there are some things that need to be perfect. For example, right. your financial statements, like you said, those, those have to be perfect. And you want them to be as meticulous as possible. Your marketing strategy, while it may not be perfect right off the bat, you want it to be as good as possible because, you know, money goes into it. But do not let the lack of perfection or your inability to be perfect stop you from starting that business, going out and trying something new because it's a learning experience that's going to help you to perfect the craft in the end anyway. The thing that I want to ask you, because you have been to several different countries, you have excelled yeah. at your craft, and we're going to look into the business aspect. Uh, where is your favorite city? And this is a question we ask all of our guests, by the way. Oh, man. And so, there, you know, that's, that's a hard. So there's something favorite about every place I've been to. Mm -hmm. And my two, I got, a, I got two of them, but... I would say number one is Medellin, Colombia. That's where I'm at right now. I mean, oh. Medellin, Colombia, it's, it was the first place we came. We were scared of it because all yeah. of the stuff that we heard on, you know, Netflix and, and oh, for those of you, you guys America. listening, like this used to be uh, a pretty rough city. It was uh, Pablo Escobar used to live here. And, you know, so when, when we came here, we came here for four days. We're like, hey, we went to Cartagena for New Year's. We we're going to go here for four days. Then we we're going to go to Bogota. And we came through the va we came through this huge tunnel. We just saw that it's, a, it's in a deep valley. And you can see behind me, it's nothing but trees and water. And so it feels like you're in the forest, but it's also the city. And, and I looked at my wife and I said, I want to stay. Like we, just, we, just ex we were just driving it through the city. I said, we, went, we stayed for four months. And... We got to experience the people and the people of Colombia. They are so nice. Uh, I mean, the, it, it's clean here. Uh, it's very friendly to entrepreneurism, very friendly to, um, you know, uh, uh, Americans, very friendly to really anyone's that come. Uh, and, and the people are so I don't speak Spanish. My wife does. And, and so they help me with everything. And it's just it's the, one of the kindest places I've been. The weather is perfect 24-7. They have fancy restaurants. My wife and I are really big into food. They have really healthy food. Health and fitness is a big thing here. On Sundays, they shut down the streets and they walk uh, and they exercise and they're always out doing something. Um, and, and so it's just, it's from a cultural standpoint, you know, family is a really big thing here. Uh, they love to sing and they love to dance and music and just all these things that we really enjoy. It really has it all, and the weather is perfect. And then my second one would be Buenos, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is where we also want a home because it's, um, you know, the weather gets a little bit colder there, so that's why it's on second. <laughs> and then a, a close second is Milan, Italy. We were in Italy, and that place was 
but that the time over there, right? The time it challenges. And so that, I would say Medellin, Colombia right now is my, my favorite, which is why we're here. Milan, Italy. My favorite, yeah. one of my favorite football teams is, are, is AC Milan, by the way. So okay. Milan, okay. definitely uh, a place I like to visit. So I'm going to say that we're in, it's pronounced Medellin. Medellin, right? Or is Medellin? Uh, yin, like a ya. Yeah. Medellin? Medellin. Da- yeah, double L. Medellin. Oh, yes, with Java. Medellin. Yeah. Um, let's say that you and I are in Medellin, Colombia. Let's say that we're out and about having a talk, and I see one of my friends, surprisingly, what is he doing in Colombia? One of my friends approaching us, and I decide that, you know what? I want to introduce you to my friend. So I say to my friend, friend, this is Zach. Zach, this is friend. When my friend meets you at this time, who exactly is Zach that he's meeting? Oh, man, what a question. That's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, oh, thank you. Who is Zach? Oh my gosh! I so here I'm a I'm a farm kid at heart. I love, you know, I love work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think work is the is the secret to happiness because we get to, you know, bring something to the world and we get to produce something. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, so so when you say who is Zach, I think Zach is I, I'm my beliefs and I'm my principles. Right. And, and, you know, my principles are um, pretty simple is just be nice to people. Right? Just be nice to people. It doesn't, everyone has a bad day. And this is, this is one of my, fa- I'm a really big in the quotes because there's so much we can learn from people before us is, is this, if you take the time to understand, you can't both hate somebody and understand them at the same time. Because if you understood them, you you would understand why why they are the way they are, right? And so if you really think you can't hate and understand someone at the same time, and so there's some there's some people going through some stuff right now in the world, but if you understood why they were doing it the way they were doing it, you would understand why they're doing what they're doing today. And I just really I hold that true. Now it's it's a practice that you have to be conscious of, right? Because sometimes the humanity in us wants to react instead of respond and so i believe that uh, you know back to the principles i believe we should be kind to each other uh i believe you know integrity is the foundation of living a great life and not integrity in the sense of right and wrong right like good and bad but integrity to yourself and your word like if you say you're gonna do something do it and i like that is i think so lost in this world today is like people uh don't understand the value of trust in in their word and so if you can be who you say you are no like you're going to get to you know people get to know you in the real self i think um education is the foundation of living a great life that's my my company's name is uh learn and grow rich and Ah. the reason I named it that is because there's no other way to get rich other than reading a book or, or watching a video or learning from your mentor. There's there, like, I, I did the, the mental gymnastics around this and that's the only way to get rich is go learn something. And the more you learn about it, right. The more you can charge if the market is in demand for it. And it's like, it's not a secret. Uh, the, the, the challenge is, is in, in the society we live in today is a lot of people want there to be a secret or a shortcut. And if there's a shortcut, we would just call it the way, right? We would just call it the way. And so, you know, so be kind, live a life with integrity, uh, work hard. I believe, you know, I, I will never retire because I, I was here to, to bring value to the world. And I love what I'm doing. I agree with that. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like retire. I've tried, I've had the opportunity to, to quote unquote retire. And I was depressed. Wasn't I was like, what am I doing? What's the, what am I, I was sitting on a beach in Dominican Republic. Literally. I was like, I achieved yeah. everything I wanted. It's like, what am I doing? And my coach was like, well, you just need to figure out what's next. Zach. And so I just keep asking myself what's next. Right. And, you know, I also believe at the same time that we all have to go through our own suffering to get to the happiness, which is why happiness, joy, all that is such a, a an amazing place 
and um, because you have to earn it, right? You have to earn it. And I mean, I, I can tell you, there's plenty of times I've been crying, crying on the floor, not knowing what to do, uh, just like ready to quit. But you know, I just keep persevering and persevering and persevering. And that's why he said, like, the struggle brings the joy. And and I'm a big believer that happiness is a destination, or I'm sorry, a direction, not a destination. And I just keep, you know, I just keep working on it every day. And so that would be, you know, those are some of the, I mean, I could probably go on, but those are some of the principles that I live my life by. And, um, you know, and so when, when your friend met me, that would be, uh, that would be who he's meeting. That's some bril- that's it's brilliant, it's relieving, it's breathtaking, and it's quite intelligent. There are so many things you said. Like, all right, let me try to bring up three or four points that you mentioned that really stuck out to me. Learn and grow rich. The only way to get rich is by learning. Right. You also mentioned accountability and also being um, honest in terms of you say you're going to do something, get it done. Be who you say you are. And why am I holding four fingers instead of two? <laughs> but we can, <laughs> we can figure that out another time. Um, the third thing that you mentioned, you said that you believe work is the pathway to happiness because it adds meaning to your life. You even tried to retire before. Never worked out. You felt bored and, aim- bored and aimless. I know, you know that's something I agree with because when you have a purpose, and that comes back to the learn and gr- learn and grow rich. Right. When you have a purpose for your life or something that you need to do, your body, your body, your brain tries to align reality to achieve that. And when you have nothing to do, it's like you're just wasting away, waiting to die. Um, are you familiar with Vincent Van Gogh? G O E T H E. Is it, yeah, is I, I've, it? I've definitely heard of Vince Van Gogh. He's, he's uh, I don't, world famous, obviously, and I don't know much about his uh, other than Work. paintings, yeah, type stuff. Well, he was one of those guys that in his younger age, he wasted away his talents. And as he started to grow, he even got in love, fell in love with this girl. She broke his heart and he started pursuing true meaning for his life. Long story short, though, is that 82 years old, his mind, he said, was as fresh as when he was 25 years old. At 82 years old. And he did some of his best work in his later years as well. And the reason why I bring this up is because it adds credence to what I was saying earlier. If you have a purpose in life, if you have something to work towards, which is where the work comes in, it keeps you young, it keeps you fresh, it keeps you alert, and it keeps you going forward versus you know working for 45 40 45 years retiring and not having anything to do so you just waste away there are quite a bit of lessons here and i hope that everyone listening pays close attention because even though you speak so softly the things that you say have such profound impact i want to ask you something that when I ask this question, feel free to speak as much or as little as possible about it as you'd like. How did you get here? That's the thing. Like we can speak about um, the business. And like you said, a lot of the things that you're going to say are things we've heard already. But when I listen to you, I'm hearing someone as they would call it enlightened. I don't want to use that word, but I want to speak about someone who has sat down, contemplated life. You have been to the lowest of lows, on the ground, crying. You don't know where to go next, what to do. You feel defeated. And now we can say you're on the top of the mountain. You're successful. You have been living the life that you dreamed of. Beautiful wife, wonderful company, amazing purpose in life, added value. How did you get here? That's a beautiful, man, you got some great questions, my friend, because they're, you know, in the world of business and money, I grew up in the Midwest, right? And I I was a farm kid and I didn't, you know, we worked hard for every dollar we had. And so I wanted to make sure money wasn't never an issue because it was when I was growing up. And I saw the heartache and the heartbreak and all the other challenges lack of finances had. And so I told myself I'm going to become the best at 
managing money, making money, this thing called money. So first I had to figure out what money was, right? And you know, I went through the traditional school and all of that in college. And um, I got to where I was doing everything I was told to do uh, by, the, by the, you know, we'll, we'll call it society. And then it wasn't working. <laughs> and one day, it, like, like I thought it was, I had an expectation. And the challenge is expectations will destroy you if you have improper expectations, right? Because they, they, uh, they don't align with reality. And so you're always fighting reality and then you get upset and you get mad. And for me, it, it led me to drinking. Like I was drinking every night. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes because I just wasn't happy. I was, and I looked over at my uh, associate one day and I said, I feel like I was lied to. And they go, what do you mean? And I said, I feel like I was lied to because I'm working hard. I'm working 16 to 20 hours a day, sleeping at the office, don't have a don't have a, a girlfriend because that would take so that would sidetrack me from my work yada 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 and i said i'm not getting the success i wanted mm-hmm. and you know i just remember saying that and then i hired a coach and then so th- this is the answer to your question is how did i get here mm-hmm. uh, i had a coach that said quit blaming everyone else for your lack of success you are where you're at because of who you are and the choices that you made Start taking some personal responsibility for your life and go out there and get the thing that you want. Now, it was, he was a little bit more direct than that. Uh, but he, it, it, at the time, it upset me because I was blaming everyone else for my lack of success, which is easy. You wanted sympathy, yeah? Right. I wanted sympathy. I wanted empathy. I wanted, I wanted to, somebody to feel sorry you for me. And then listen and stuff like right. that. And he was having nothing to do with it. He was giving you the bag of bricks to the face. (laughs) Right. And I've never been talked to like that. I've never been talked to. Everyone's like, oh, it's them, not you. You know, I'm paraphrasing. It's them, not you. And that Mm -hmm. was like, yeah, it is them. Uh, And that was the first time I really started looking inside to myself. And I remember my my head felt like it was going to explode because I was so upset. But I was paying this guy. I mean, this was 15 plus years ago. And so I still remember it. Is I could remember the moment, everything, because it was such a pivotal point in my life. And then five minutes later, it was like, oh, if I'm responsible for who, where I'm at, that means I could be responsible for where I'm going. I don't have to wait for my boss to give me a raise. I don't have to wait to go start a business. I don't have to wait for this. I don't have to wait for that. I don't have to wait for anything. I can just go do it. And so the first thing is responsibility, personal responsibility. And then the second thing is intention. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing right now? Because if I don't have an intention, where am I going? Right? All of these things. I have a personal coach right now. I coach with twice a week. And man, she, she has trained me to about personal. I mean, because I can't get away with nothing. Like there's things in my life today that... I'm like, how am I responsible for that? You know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she's like, well, do you want to be, do you want to be, have control of your life or do you want to be a victim? And I'm just like, oh, come on. Right. And like, all right, I'm responsible. Let me find how I'm responsible for that. Right. And so I, I had this constant reminder. And then it's like, so personal responsibility, everything in your life is, is a result of you. Right. And then the second one is intention. And so I work really, and so if you, if for you guys listening, intention is, you know, the, the who, the what, the why, you know, why, why do you wake up and go to work? What is the work, the purpose of the work? And so my, my intentions have changed over time. I started off working, <clears throat> going to school to get a good job to help my mom, make sure my mom was never having to worry about retirement because my dad died when I was 12. We had, you know, a family farm, didn't have a whole lot of money to retire. In fact, there wasn't a retirement plan. The kids, you know, I say, I say us kids are the retirement plan. So that was my initial um, intention. And then I accomplished that. And then I got a job working for one of the best companies in the world, became a published author. Right. And then I hated it. Like, I was like, okay, this, this isn't fulfilling. And then I quit that job to start a business. That was, you know, until I got that. And then I started making really good money. And then it was like, what next? What next? What next? Traveling the world. What next? And just, and finally, I got something so big that it's a life, it's a lifelong mission, which is, you know, one of the reasons I'm in these podcasts so much because I just want to share the wisdom I've, I've uh, 
learned over the ages is, you know, my, my, my uh, intention now is empower people to have an amazing life in all aspects of their life, not just finances. Uh, I'm talking, uh, uh, you know, adventure, you know, spiritual, uh, uh, relationships, relationships, men, family, like the whole health. Exp- health. The health was something I did not focus on. I used to drink and smoke and not exercise and eat fast food. And today, I, yeah, I think not sleep at all. I like sleep like I was just, you know, I, I saw my body as a tool and I could use it. And today, I just see it. I mean, I go to the gym. I I uh, I juice. Eat right. I, eat yeah, I, I live on water. celery juice. And <laughs> right, like I, I just, uh, you know, I had my, uh, my, I don't drink coffee. You were sitting here. I had some mushroom coffee at su- su- supplements. I'm just so focused on uh, health and well being now. But you have to learn that, right? You have to w- learn that. And so the question I ask myself today is how do we end human suffering, right? And that was the, you know, how do we feed the hungry, ho- home the uh, uh, homeless? you know, the vital clean waters and stuff like this. And, and the vision that I have is, well, if I could teach enough people how to run a successful business to make the money they need to buy the stuff they that would make a difference in their life, that is way better than giving out charity. That is way better than, you know, um, you know, which, which we still do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like we, like we have an organization down here in Columbia we've had for like four years. We, we started off with just giving them food. And today we, we give them food and we give field trips out to, you know, to the uh, countryside and we, we help them get a building and, you know, we're uh, starting different things. And we uh, over in Kenya, we help uh, uh, people go to college, uh, the Masai tribesmen. And so, you know, we still do that because some people need a kickstart. Right. But my big my big focus is on helping people start a business so that business can fund their life. And I. And I see it like if I can teach a community on how to run a business, then that community can have e-commerce and that community can have pride. And one of the things I, I, I see with businesses is there's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of pride of being able to produce for yourself and for your family and for your loved ones that writing a charity check won't. It, 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 won't dem- cut it. it almost diminishes the human being, right? Rob because humans, opportunity. What's that? It robs them of the opportunity to be effective it, and live oh, a you got it, man. it robs them. Uh, that's what my coach always says when I start feeling sorry for people. She goes, oh, my God, you, you see them as a small little child, Zach. They're a big person, and they're capable of doing anything they want if you can help them see that as opposed to, oh, I feel sorry for them. Here's a check, right? Now, I'm, again, I'm not saying that we, we don't do that. We, we, you know, we write checks all the time for stuff. But, to, you know, for, for the basics, like for the food so they can have enough food to read the books that we provide to go do the stuff, you know, th- yeah. that they need to do. You have to survive until they can change things, right? Right, right. And so it's like, but, you know, there, there's this beautiful book. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but I got the gist of it. It was called, uh, um, it was about uh, the challenge of, um, oh my gosh, I can't think, I'm not going to share it because I, uh, I can't, I can't share it in its totality, but yeah, that's, that's Mm -hmm. a a personal responsibility intention. And then here's Mm -hmm. the third one, grit, like grit, grit. because you're going to get punched in the face. You're going to kick. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to lose money. Someone, someone's going to rip you off. A partner is going to do something bad. I mean, I, Mm -hmm. I, I, I've lost, I've lost money. I'm the biggest deal I've ever lost. Uh, I lost half a million dollars on one deal and it was on a pure arrogance, right? Pure arrogance mm-hmm. because my mentor mm-hmm. told me not to do it. And I, you know, but I, I, and so I had to, like, I'm telling you, man, it was, it was, it was, a, it was tough going through stuff like that. And so today I learned to put my ego on the, on the, on the shelf. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I surround myself with great people that know stuff more about it. And then I just listen to their wisdom. But you got to have grit because, th- I mean, this, this is bad this stuff is, will happen. Yeah, I, yeah, and it's, it's. I wouldn't say it's bad stuff. Stuff's gonna happen, and it's like, what's the filter that you see it through? Are you like, oh, here's here's another opportunity, or I'm, uh, you know, the world's out to get me. And so context, mm-hmm. context is a big uh, thing, and so I try to keep an em- empowering context, such as, oh. You know, 
another problem we get to solve or you know however however it keeps you your emotional balance up uh because it's easy it's easy to go the other way in uh-huh. in that victim mentality and go oh i knew this wasn't going to work or oh wh- whatever it, it looks like we all have our own version of it and so keeping mm-hmm. a powerful context is is really important because this is going to take years this is going to take We're years a li- <laughs> right it's a it's, it's a lifelong journey I, i've been going at this for 20 years and that that's what i you know i get really jacked up about this is what they don't tell you when they're selling you a program a coaching program or a personal development program is this is one of many that you're going to have to buy to become somebody that could become a high income earner that can have that yes. life of traveling the world that could do whatever it is that your original intention of buying this was you're not going to turn your life around in 30 60 90 days right you can start turning your life around in 30, 60, 90 days. You can set yourself on the right path as well. Right. You can start going down. You can start, you know, uh, eating uh, the right food. You can start right uh, reading the right like books. But, like, to go from broke to, to superhero and wealthy, man, it, take, it takes a minute. Now, the difference is a guy like me that's been there, I've, I've put in the proverbial uh, time, and you know, by no means am I, like, at the pinnacle of, of it. Uh, I saw, uh, you know, it's, it's a mountain with no top, but I could buy a program and I could get success in 30, 60, 90 days because I've already had it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And it's just an instruction manual. And I know how to put that puzzle together. The challenge I see with many people and I experience this myself is you're buying puzzle pieces. And so in the, in the world of business, you're buying a puzzle piece called marketing. Okay. Now I know how to do marketing. More specifically, I know how to do Facebook ads. More specifically, I know how to do a podcast. Okay, you got marketing. Then you got sales. Okay, I understand the sales process. Then you got operations. Okay, I understand operation. And then finance. These are the four components we start scaling sell businesses with. Very mm-hmm. few people understand finance. It, and it's yeah. the foundation of business. And, and success. And success. And the challenge is, is if you don't understand finance, you don't understand the impact of your decision making every day. Mm-hmm. And so people continue to make these decisions and they say, Oh, I don't need to understand finance. Why well, would argue you do? Because that's the ultimate dashboard, you know, the the proverbial scoreboard of how well you're yeah. playing this game of business. And if you don't understand that, you're gonna run out of money, you're gonna you're, you're not gonna be profitable because you don't understand. And so the challenge with that is is putting it all together and knowing how to put the puzzle together, not just knowing the puzzle piece. And the mm-hmm. only way I've learned how to put a puzzle together is by putting it together wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that piece doesn't fit over there. That piece doesn't fit there. That piece doesn't. You know what? Mm-hmm. That piece fit there yesterday, but it doesn't fit there today. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, oh my gosh, you know. And, 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 uh-huh. and, and so it's like this evolving puzzle. Right. And it's so fun. But I'm telling you, once you get it, it's like riding a bike. Once you get it, you can just look at something and you go, that's off, that's off, that's off. And that's why I decided to get into the private equity businesses where we help people start scale and sell businesses. And we do it ourselves is because I can just inherently see it. Right. Mm -hmm. I can just inherently see it. And I'm like, oh, that's off, that's off, that's off. Or, Or here's the other one, my friend, is everything's perfect. But you as a CEO are a jerk. <laughs> You're a jerk to your people. No one wants to work with you. You have a beautiful product. You have a beautiful system. Your finances are on point. But you're a jerk. And so you're, you're, not, a, inspired. you're, you're, you're not inspiring your team. You treat them bad. They don't want to show up. Or if they do show up, they're just showing up for a paycheck. And so. Bare minimum work being done and right. stuff like that. There's this, Toxic human, there's this human element that people aren't aware i wasn't i mean i was a, a analyst by trade i the reason i was an analyst is i was scared of other people i was i couldn't i couldn't i would break out into a sweat i would stutter i would go blank i, I was not one that could be with other people um comfortably i was the most probably social awkward person anyone's ever seen but i trained and i read books and i practiced and i spoke in front of people with Put yourself out there Right. I would just sweat. In front. I was standing in front of people. I was just dripping sweat because I was so anxious and nervous. 
But then I just, all right, next time a little better, next time a little better. And then I realized, oh, my God, everyone's as afraid as me as I am as them. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. <laughs> right? And then I started understanding people. And once I started mm-hmm. understanding people, like, my whole life changed because I became better at sales. Because now I wasn't selling them something. I was providing a solution to their problem to achieve their goal. being the guide to the right Yeah, solution. I was being a guide, man. That's the perfect way to put it. I was, I was no longer in sales. I was being a guide. And mm-hmm. so um, that, that just really changed everything for me. And today, it's, you know, I used to be a back of the room type guy because I was afraid. And today, I love being at the front of the room talking and, and listening to people and, you know, more of what, exactly what we're doing today because this is the thing that makes the difference. And you still got to go put in the reps, right? You still got to go do the stuff in the back of the room. Mm-hmm. The, the, the mission you have of helping businesses. So I remember when you reached out about the Boardroom Podcast, you mentioned that, hey, we have a similar goal. And I'm just putting this out there so that everyone listening and watching can understand what we're about. The goal really, you know, that I had in mind when I started the Boardroom Podcast is I wanted to leave an impact on the world. I don't want it to. I want to leave an impact on the world. It is not good enough for me to come and have all this talent, all this ability, all this potential, all this work ethic, and I go back with a whimper. And no one remembers me and no one's life is better because they met me. Right. Absolutely not. That's a waste of a life. So I set out to help people. And the way to help people is by you can't be happy when you're hungry, you're homeless, the bills aren't paid, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's hard to live a meaningful life at that right. point. So sorry. I decided that to do the work that I want to do to achieve what needs to be achieved. I want to help small businesses. And as you know, as a consultant, small businesses are the ones that move the community. They're the ones that hire the most people. They invest in the most community projects. They're the ones that when they sneeze, the community gets a cold, not the corporations. Corporations can only do so much because there are only so many of them. So the Boardroom Podcast was designed to help to educate entrepreneurs and business owners so that they can make the right decisions and avoid doing the wrong things that well you and i did grow up so remember you talked about the puzzle and you said the most interesting thing well this piece doesn't work and the funny thing is it worked here yesterday so why is it working here today because every situation is unique so i second your drive i second your tenacity i second your mission you have said so many things that are absolutely astounding absolutely brilliant i love them the thing that really just sparks like you heard me you heard me laughing a lot because i can relate to so many of what you said but the thing that really connects with me from what you said and i can point to one two or three things is the overall drive that you have the overall purpose so you know simon Sinek said you should start with why i believe that you found your why in life i mean you spoke about your coach saying to you that, oh, so you want to pity them. You want to feel sorry for them. They can be amazing. They can do wonderful things. And you use that to form what you've been working on in helping businesses succeed. You've been in so many different areas, so many different fields, worked on so many different projects that when you speak, it's like you're saying something, but deep down, I can hear that you're relating to so many different life experiences that has taught you these lessons. And thank you for sharing. And I am going to put you on the spot with another, you might call it amazing question. Yeah, you got some great questions. Thank you, by the way, because I'm just so curious about everything that's happening. So I want everyone to just have a really brief synopsis of what's happened. You were, in, you were going through life, right? And it's going to lead up to the question. You were going through life. You were doing all that they said you should have done to be successful. You were working hard. You got the degree. You had a career because you were an analyst. Not many people can do, especially in math and economics. And what kind of analyst were you? Financial analyst? I was a valuation analyst. And so it's For very, real estate? Uh, no, so check this out. Businesses. Anything that could produce cash flow. So I have valued human capital. I have valued humans. I have valued software. I have valued hybrid debt instruments. I have valued loan portfolios. I have valued depositories Mm. at 
credit unions, if it can create mm. value or be exchanged for money, which is anything, which is anything, but I specialize in illiquid, non-marketable assets, which is one of the hardest things to value because there's no public data. If you have a company such as Apple and you want to know how much it's worth, you go to the stock exchange stock and you go, what's it trading for today? If you mm -hmm. want to buy a private business in, in the middle, in, let's say in Montana, mm -hmm. right? How much is it worth? Well, there's all of these really fun things you have to consider. And so that's that again, that, that was, you know, I, I was um, <clears throat> challenged at the time, but today it was some of the best training I've ever had because I know value in and out. I'm a published author in it. Uh, I, I, it it's all theoretical. And, yeah. and what, it, what it could be worth a million dollars to me and half a million dollars to you and $10 million for someone else. And so yeah. really value is in the eye of the beholder. And so there's all of these components, but it's just such a fun conversation. So that's what I uh, was uh, specialized is valuation consulting. Valuation consulting. And, I'm, and I know for a fact that this has helped you in your career because oh this God. is going to give you the lens to see opportunities where no one else sees them and see flaws where no one else sees them. Absolutely. Because in the world of making money, it's value and risk. It's, yeah. it's, it's risk in return, literally the basis of it. And so, you know, understanding risk, you can mitigate risk. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I know, I know you're leading up to a question. So I, I mean, I, I could sit here all oh, day yeah. and talk to you. So yeah, you, you've done all the right things, but it still was not working out. The money was not being made. You were burnt out. You might put, you were working so hard. Life wasn't what you wanted it to be, and you eventually had a change. So I know there are a few events that have led up to where you are. What would you say are the three most profound events in your lifetime that have, one, contributed to your identity as a person, and two, contributed to your business, entrepreneurial, social success? And the reason why I put business, entrepreneurial, and social together is because as you and I realize, and we've, well, you've mentioned, and you and I accept, is you can't do business without the people. The system right. can be good, but if the people in the system are terrible, the system is not going to work. So we right. do have to have a social component to business and entrepreneurship. So what would be those three events that would have shaped you as a person? Um, I have a lot, but I'm just going to, the ones that are coming to me. My dad dying when I was 12. Wow. Right? So I, I, uh, I take over, I didn't have to. And so here's the other thing I've learned. I didn't have to do anything. I chose to do it, but I felt obligated to it. Right. Um, so I would work before school. I would work after school. I had this, uh, self-imposed tremendous, uh, responsibility now of making sure the farm continued X, Y, Z. And so that really, that, that taught me work ethic that taught me responsibility. And I think today, man, I think if, if we want to make a difference in the world, give, give, give kids responsibility, give them a job from the youngest age. Cause, oh my gosh, it, the, the reason I am where I'm at today is because of that work ethic. Like if you want this, go get it, Zach. You know, right. And so, but it, it's, in, it was instilled in me. So my dad dying when I was 12, uh, the second one would be me getting everything I wanted. Right. And so I got a very high paying six figure job with every bell and whistle, life insurance, health insurance, dental vision. I never had any of that stuff, right? Uh, becoming a published author, working for one of the best companies in the world. And then realizing that wasn't, it was the most, <clears throat> at the time it was, uh, I think, I still think to this day, one of the saddest points of my life because I achieved everything I wanted. And I realized it wasn't what I wanted. And wow. <clears throat> so that was, I was like, oh my God. So, you know, my, my midlife crisis was at 27, one of them, right? When I said, I, this, this isn't it. I've been working 10 years for this, and this isn't it. And so that would be the second one. Um, and the third one is I, I went through a seminar, and uh, I do a lot of personal development seminars. And the culmination of it was life is empty and meaning meaningless life is emptying and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless that it's emptying and meaningless right and so everything you you all of your problems in your life are created in your head 
and it was just this beautiful experience. And so with that, it was like, well, it is empty and meaningless until you as an individual put meaning to it. What do you want your life to mean? And I'm just like, whoa, right? What do you want your life to mean? And, uh, you know, again, I could go on, but those are three that really stuck out. My dad dying, me getting everything I wanted, and then me being told, you know, life is empty and meaningless until you figure out what you want it to, you know, your purpose, your destiny, however you want to articulate. I've been over the world. They call it, you know, every, everyone has a different explanation for it. But at the end of the day, it's like, why are you here? Yeah. And, yeah. and what's the legacy you're going to leave back? How are you going to be remembered? Right. Those are those are powerful events. I remember when I was growing up, I was perhaps eight, nine at the time. Definitely not ten. Perhaps it was ten because it was grade four. But my grandpa died actually. And I was at home when he died. And I was pretty close to him. At that moment it taught me the value of life. Right. And the value of um because he was fine to my eyes as a child. He was there as usual, and the veranda, we're normal to see on the patio, as we put it in Colombia. And the next thing I knew, he wasn't there. Like, literally, the next thing I knew, he was not there. And the next thing, he was gone forever. So that taught me the value of life and cherishing the people that are there. And like you said, the thing is, the thing is you know, why I'm stuttering so much is because I'm reflecting on everything that you said and I can relate to them. And I've seen where your story is so amazing because you're talking from a point of been there, done that, and it's not as cracked up as you want it to be. Especially when you said about the midlife crisis, as they would put it, and getting everything that you ever wanted and realizing that it's really not what you wanted. And it speaks back about, you know, having a career, making the money, working the hours and not feeling fulfilled. What would you say? We haven't touched on entrepreneurship, have we? <laughs> well, I, I would argue, way. I would say this is the reality. Well, everything we're talking about is the reality of entrepreneurship that oh, yeah? very few people want to dive into because mm -hmm. it's scary. They want to talk about web pages. They want to talk about, you know, Sales conversion funnels. rates and you know, all of this other increase in profits, ROI, right, and stuff like you know, that. all of this, stuff, which we have to, that is a hard mm -hmm. skill. You have to understand or know someone that understands. But if, if you can't put this very complex, uh, formula together, I mean, you're not going to have success. And the challenge is, is, is the complex formula is people, right? Yeah. It's people, mm -hmm. people are buying your stuff. People are yeah. working for you. You're buying other people's stuff to, you know, take whatever and, and make it into something of more value. And so this world of entrepreneurship is nothing but people and, and sure. people and, and entrepreneurs, myself included, used to want to this. I'm talking about me used to, to not want to deal with the people, but make the money. And it was just like, how disconnected are you? The people are your money. And, you know, we have, we have a, a thing in, 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 inside of our masterminds and say, and we say, go make a friend with a stranger because they have your money, <laughs> right? It's like, tr try making money without another human being in the interaction. Even if it's it online, work. even if it's these currency exchanges, everything, there's another human being on the other end. And if you were the, I, I love this analogy or one of these books I read that said, if you were the last person on earth, you would be the richest person on earth. You would have every home. You would have every car. You would have every jet. You would have, you would own the world proverbially, right? And in about three to six months, you would be, you know, eventually you would revert back to a farmer because all the food would be gone, right? All, all the, uh, uh, all the gas would be used up. The cars would eventually break down, yada, yada, yada. And you would be a farmer. And so, because you need to survive. And so I was like, oh my gosh, we need other people. I need somebody to work at that restaurant so I can go to the restaurant to eat. I need somebody to pave the road so I have a road to drive on. I need all of these other humans in this world to do their activity 
so that I can do and focus on my activity. And it was just like this revelation I had because I, I, I actually did a, a speech at a big conference about community. And we have these different communities specifically as I travel. And so I have my gym community. I have my uh, real estate community. I have my business community. And without these other people, man, we don't have nothing. And so if, if you're listening to this and you want to become an entrepreneur, understand people and understand what drives them and understand what they need and understand how to make friends with people and understand how to make a difference. And then understand the metrics and the mechanics called operations, finance, sales, and marketing in order to do that at a higher scale. Find out how to connect with people, what drives them, their fears, their motivations. Then find out how best you can help them avoid their fears and move towards their dreams. And we know that it's not about the money in the bank and the cars, because like you said, if you had, if you were the only person on earth, you had everything, but you still would become a farmer. Question that really just keeps going through my mind. I'm going to put it out there. What would you say are the three ways or most important things that you have done to have ha added such meaning to your life, not only for yourself, because you're not a selfish person, you've lived for others. So what are the three things that you have done or the three ways that you've added meaning to your life so that your life can not only be valuable to you, but to those around you and your community at large? Okay. so. What are the things, I just want to make sure I understand, what are the things that I've done to, for me to help make a difference in the community? Is that the question? No, to make your life meaningful. So you could be here, you could have the Rolls Royce, you could have the house in Beverly Hills, and you could be miserable because this is just not it. But instead, you are happily married, you have a thriving business, and you have people around the world who are living better lives because of you, whether it is through employment, whether it is through a business that you've consulted with and helped them to live on your products and services a lot more efficiently and at a better cost, etc. So your life is meaningful, as I would put right. it. How did you get to lead in a meaningful life? Um I would, I would say I tried the other stuff and it didn't work. So I just kept asking the question. <laughs> I, was like, I, had, I had the cars and I had, you know, all this other stuff. I'm like, I'm still not happy. Like, I am not happy. And I was like, oh, should I go buy another thing? Well, you know, it's temporary. And so I would say to bring it back to, you know, a, the life is like, I took responsibility for my happiness. And again, I, I just, we were over in this um, training in Italy and they said, this is what they said at the train. It was a personal development training. It was awesome. They, they were all, there was like 1500 Italians speaking it in Italian. So we were, uh, my, my buddy actually is uh, one of the owners of the companies that was putting it on. I'm business partners with, he's like, you got to come and do this. So we went over there and they said, you have, a responsibility to be happy. And I was like, whoa. And if I look at that, I said, if I'm not happy, I'm going to infect the people around me. Right. And so it was like, oh my gosh, I, you know, and I, and I, I, I was sort of doing this, but I didn't know about it. Right. I was working so much on myself. And then I got myself sorted out. I, I figured out how to make Zach happy. And Damn. then the next level, which is, you know, in life and in my eyes is how do we help other people achieve happiness? And then what happens is, you know, these, I don't know if anyone can relate to this. Your mind is a like a wild beast. I call it, you know, it's like a wild Mustang and it'll just, it'll run you, right? It'll, it'll, things come in, thoughts come in. You can't say focus and all this. And so, you know, you start thinking about the 1% of your life doesn't work instead of how blessed you really are. And, you know, all of these things. However, when you start focusing on somebody else, all of your problems go away, right? So, oh my gosh, if I focus on that, that 
that family I really want to help or that young entrepreneur that's really doing, if my, all of my mental energy is focused on them, my problems do not exist. And, and so the more that I can focus on other people, obviously the less I have to be with myself, right? And, you know, deal with the chaos of my, my, my own brain. And at the same time, I need to, I need to deal with myself. And so when I was in, when I was in Bali, uh, I love like going and hang out with tribes. Like I do stuff that's really hard and difficult because it, it helps me see life at a different level. And so I've spent, you know, I've hung out with tribes and, and slept in the rainforest and had to, you know, hunt for my own food type stuff. And I love it. But when I was in Bali, I was with this guy who's very uh, spiritual guy. He goes, Zach, it's easy to be Zen at the top of a mountain. He goes, the practice is coming off that mountain and being with the people <laughs> because that's where the challenges are going to exist. And if you can master that, oh my gosh, it's, it's a brilliant thing. And so mastering yourself, mastering happiness in yourself, understanding mm -hmm. oneself, and then sharing that gift with the other people out there in the world to help them master themselves to achieve that level of happiness, joy, whatever it is that they want. Uh, and then it just, you know, it, life works out and, you know, I have coaches, man, I coach two, three times a week, depending on what I need to remind me who I am and, and wh why, why I'm here because left to our own devices, man, we're, um, we'll, we'll go somewhere and it won't be a powerful place. <laughs> I, you know, the thing that's also quite fascinating about, fascinating about this all I believe that in and of itself, though it's a people thing, what you've achieved in terms of meaning to life, I believe it's a system. So you need to you need to figure out for you what you want, what you need to be happy. So that's the first part. It has to be about you and your happiness. Right. And right. then after you've figured out you and what you want, you integrate into others what is important to them in terms of what can you bring to the table that will make such and such a person's life a lot easier. So you have you, the individual, you have the next person, and then now you can focus on a broader, a broader impact. And the reason why I think this works, and it's counterintuitive, if, if you might add, there's um, a saying in the Bible, it says, by beholding we become. And they also say that whatever you think about is what you become. Now, if you're thinking, now think about this, you know, you know what you want to be happy. And you're saying that for me to be happy, this is what I want. But I'm not going to worry so much about the money in the bank, the Ferrari, the house, whatever the case might be. I'm going to think about my brother. Let's keep it familiar. My brother or my sister. My brother or my sister needs to get through college and... What they need from me is $30,000 this year. They've been doing well. They've been studying. I appreciate the work that they've put in. How can I get $30,000 to help them? Right. You're not thinking about the money for you. But by doing this, you're automatic, automatically learning how to make $30,000. That skill is never going to leave you. By right. beholding you become. Because now you're thinking about someone else's happiness. Now, when you fulfill that um, commitment, in a way, it's rewarding to you because you gain so much more from helping others than you gain from helping yourself. I don't know how it works. Perhaps it's psychological, perhaps it's not, but that's just how it is. And from there, I believe what you've done is you've created a system because the first part is you figured out yourself. The second part is you figured out how to help others. And now others that you have helped are trying to figure out how to help you. So everything is moving in synergy. One helps the other and the other depends on the other and so on. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it. What do you think? Well, yeah, I, I'm, um, you know, I struggled. Uh, I mean, I, there was a point in my life when I said, if this is life, I don't care if I live or die because this life sucks. Like I literally, yeah. like, it was just like, and so, you know, the challenge is, is we're bombarded with everyone's opinions of life and mm -hmm. everyone's point of view. Like understanding point of view is such a powerful, uh, uh, tool because, mm -hmm. you know, like people, uh, I, I, I didn't want to have a relationship for a lo the longest time. In fact, when I went my, the first date with my wife, I said, just to let you know, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. So I don't want to, I don't want to misguide you anywhere. She's like, yeah, okay, you wow. 
<laughs> she, she's like, okay, it's, it's our first date, Zach. And so, but I, because I had this point of view that marriage was bad. I had this point of view of life based off my experiences. And, I, and we, yeah. and, and those experiences shape our life. And so what I learned in the world in that, that seminar I was telling you about where the world, our life is empty and meaningless. And so there's things that happen to us typically when we're younger, right? We, I, I do a lot of work yeah. on this that impact us going forward. One of them for me was being socially awkward and it boiled down to, I used to get beat up and bullied as a kid. And I learned if I'm quiet, I don't get beat up. Right. Oh. And that's, that stuck with me. Don't speak up, Zach. You, you don't want to get made fun of. You don't want to be bullied. Right. So just sit in the corner and be quiet. You're safe. And I carried that through my life and I had to unravel that to actually, right. Cause I had this, I, I felt this calling in life to, to go out and make a difference. And you can't make a difference if you can't speak. Right? You can't make a difference if you can't talk to other people. And so and I imagine like you also made you a bit passive and timid in your shell, really. So you weren't all totally, there and was, expressive. For the people that knew me 10, 12, 15 years ago, that they're like, oh my gosh, there's this totally, but I've worked on it every day. Right? I've worked oh. on it every day. And so um, help me back to the question because I got off on a little tangent there. What was the question? Oh, it's a system where you're helping others oh, yeah, yeah. You figure out what you want. Yeah. <laughs> mental frameworks. And so I'm a big advocate of mental frameworks. And so mm -hmm. for me, it's like where this, this is what I do with all of, uh, all of my clients and the businesses I work with is where are you? Where do you want to go? What are your resources to get there? Cause I like, there's not a right answer. You don't need, and, and the, the skill set of being an entrepreneur is getting where you want to go with what you have. Right. And so I don't care what your starting point is. I don't care what your destination is. I just need to know. I need to take an inventory of where you're at, where do you want to go, and what are your resources. And we call them time, money, knowledge, and relationship. We call them your four currencies. Right. And all everybody has a value. You either have time, you have money, you have knowledge, or you have relationships. Or you can, you know, if you could argue, well, when I first came down here, I didn't have anything. And I, you know, I made time and I, I, bought education and I read books and I made it a priority. And so there's this sure. mental framework. And the other thing I always had a challenge with is, is this is sort of a fun conversation is mm -hmm. I grew up in a town of 3,500 people mm -hmm. uh, with like 10 churches. <laughs> right. And so I, I, I said, I just want, I just want to pick the right one. Which one's mm -hmm. the right one? And everyone's well, mine's the right one, of course, Zach. Well, they said they're the right one. Like, and so I did a lot of study on religion, uh, spirituality, and stuff like that. Because, and here's what my now this is Zach Ullman's personal opinion, right? So, be open minded about it. I said, oh, they're all talking about the same thing. They just got there different differently, right? They all got to the same mountaintop. One took the back route. The other one took the front route. One flew in on a helicopter, right? One dug a tunnel. But if you look at people that have achieved something, it's not the doingness of it. It's the beingness of it and the principles of that understanding of that, of that, uh, the foundational aspect. And so if it's religion, if it's business, if it's whatever, mm -hmm. there's principles. And if you, and if you can hold yourself in those principles, those principles will guide you in the day-to-day doingness mm -hmm. of it. And so that's where I see a lot of people. They want to know the what's what's the doing? What button do I click? What what word do I say? What mm -hmm. X like give me that? And for some of us, we need that. And, right, the exact thing. Now for some that helps. I'm not saying that doesn't help, but if you can stand in the principle of integrity. Mm -hmm. And just do the right thing. And when you don't know, tell them you don't know. But by golly, you're going to figure it out because you're a person that does what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. You will have success, mm -hmm. right? If you can treat others well and, and empower them to get what they want on your team. Like I tell my team, whatever you guys want, <clears throat> I'll help you get it if through our business. That's a principle, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Always be learning. That's one of our principles in our businesses. Right? Always be learning, right? Have an attitude 
right? Don't forget your your good attitude when you're packing your lunch, because if you bring a bad attitude, by golly, you know, so there's these principles that if you understand the framework, again, mental framework, you can have whatever you want. And so really, I would say go, you know, when you said Zach, what, who is Zach Ullman? I'm my principles, I'm my beliefs. And if you want to have success in this world, go get a set of principles that these successful people have because they, they, they share a lot of the same principles. Mm-hmm. And then just go be that person without losing your identity. Right? That's key, right? Because you have to know who you are inside of those parameters, inside of those principles. So I know that's a long, long way of it, but that's... <laughs> no, it has to be long because this is the very essence of life. I mean, and you don't want, you don't want to be on your deathbed it's going to happen in a few minutes and it's a memory lane. You might put it, it's yeah. a walk down memory lane and all you see is regrets. You do want to have an idea of when my time comes, well, what do I need to do now that when my time comes, I will look back with fondness and gratitude because of the life I've lived and I've led and who I've become. So this is something that you were never going to short answer it and say, Oh yeah, I think, right. I think, I think that's it and it's done. You mentioned quite a bit. What are you what would you say are some of the mistakes that entrepreneurs and business owners, big and small, new and old, have made? It can be one, it can be two, doesn't matter. What are some of the mistakes that they've made or the misconceptions and misunderstandings? And the reason why I ask this that you know I've led to failure and not only just failure in the business sense, but also leading an imbalanced life that lacks meaning and happiness and satisfaction. And the reason why I say is because the mainstream view, you know, we have social media. Nobody's going to post on social media that they crapped the business meeting this morning. And because of that, they don't know how they're going to make rent. They're going to, they're going to put on, on Instagram or on Twitter or wherever that, hey, just sign this multi-million dollar deal or whatever the case might be with this popular brand that you guys know, yada, yada, yada. So they're going to post the wins and not the losses. And that in, itself, that in and of itself is toxic because that's not the reality, reality of entrepreneurship. So what are some of the things and the mistakes that entrepreneurs, new and old, big and small, have been making or you've seen them make that's led to business failure and also not leading or living a life that's meaningful? Um, yeah, so I think there's different stages, right? Because I went through these different stages. Like my first it depends on what you want. Like my first thing was just me. I just want to, I just want to make enough money so I don't have to eat peanut butter and jelly every day and borrow money from my mom. Like that was literally <laughs> like, it, it sucked. And, you know, I just kept, I was like, all right, just keep going. Just keep going. I, I took a, a job for a year uh, and I'd have to drive to Chicago every day. And it was, you know, it was a hundred miles one way. I'd wake up at four in the morning so I could beat traffic driving a an old Saturn that was in my, I actually found in my friend's yard, the tire would go low every day. The antifreeze would need, the heater didn't work. Um, and I'd have to borrow money from my mom because it wasn't a paid position because I needed experience. And so I would eat peanut butter and jellies and just sort of like it, it was, um, it's part of the process. Right. And so, you know, that at that moment, I just wanted enough money to eat literally. And then, you know, as you progress in life, obviously you want more, and you can have more yada 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 so i would say first off understand where you're at today and this most people don't do that and so i work with people uh businesses every day and they don't know they don't know what they want and you said it earlier i ask people this question i go what do you want and and they're like well what do you mean i was like i don't know what do you want if i was a genie a magic genie and i could give you anything you want what would you want and most people can't answer that most people come off with money. And I used to, I used to, you know, say $10,000 a month, $20,000, whatever, right? We f- f- far surpassed that. But in mm-hmm. those, in, in that, you know, my coach was like, well, what's the $10,000 going to buy you? And I, I had to, I had to do the mental exercises and think about like, what is it that I want? And most people don't do that. Most people, you know, mm-hmm. most people are, are doing it for some external reasons. Right, they want that yeah. car, the Lamborghini. Right, I've been there, and you know, I, I still in, so in that world. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a human. Like, figure out what you want, mm-hmm. and maybe it's, maybe it's, a, maybe it is that car, maybe it is whatever. But figure that out, 
And then go find, like, get mentors. The reason I'm doing this, it, it, uh, all these podcasts and everything I do, is wh when I w ask the question of how do I achieve what I want, there was somebody there willing to tell me, and they, they didn't have proper expectations, right? They didn't have the proper expectations. You know, it was the, the 30, 60, 90, six months, whatever you can choose, right? It took me years, years just to be able to, to sell something. And so, so, so I, I drove 200 miles round trip uh, twice, about twice a week for three years before I started to go to these trainings. And, and so, you know, the first one I would say, get, understand what it is that you want. The second one is surround yourself with people that build you up and are willing to pour into you. But also do what they tell you to do because there's – I love mentoring people. I love – it's it's like you said, there's nothing more successful than seeing somebody else succeed as a coach because that's – at the end of the day, that's you that's succeeding, true. right, through them. But if they're not willing to do the thing, it sucks as a coach. It sucks as a mentor. It sucks because it's like I'm wasting my time with you. Yeah. And so it's very – what's that? It's like parenting. You know what's right. You tell a kid to do what's right, right and a kid does what's wrong, and you're like, ah. Right. It, it to totally. And so it's like, you know, these people come to me, and they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, oh, this is what you need to do. And they're like, well, I don't want to do that. What else can I do? I was like, well, there's, you have to do that. And, mm -hmm. and what th that is, is in, in a lot of people are going to, like, their mind's just going to shut off about after what I say next because they're so afraid of it. And so what they need to do is they need to sell something. Yeah. If you want to start a business and be an entrepreneur and you're not willing to sell something, you are not going to make it. And that was so hard for me. That was like a 10 year lesson for me. You know, I wanted to understand finance and I wanted to understand marketing. I wanted to understand all this other stuff, but I was afraid to sell because I had a misconstrued expectation and, and context of what selling was. And so today I want to sell great things to people that need those great things, not the slimy used car sales person that most people think of. And so it, if you get one thing out of this podcast, go learn how to sell something. Now, here's the key. is like, well, do I create my own product or do I do this? And I'm like, well, I don't know, right? There's not a one size fits all. But I will tell you my personal experience is I've learned to sell somebody else's stuff to gain the skill set of selling and then I started my own business, like selling my own stuff. And, and I love, you know, I, I have so many mentors. Um, she said, uh, it's easier to make a hundred grand working for somebody else. It's easier to make a million dollars working for yourself. And so if you don't have the skill set of making a hundred grand, but working for someone else, typically the easiest way to get there is sales, the, the best position. You're definitely not going to make a million dollars working for yourself. Because it is way harder to make money with a team. It's way harder to make, in my opinion, and I have colleagues that would agree with this, it's way harder to make $250,000 in a business with employees than it is to make $250,000 by yourself. Because you, as a high-producing uh, uh, salesperson, you could do that. Now, there becomes a point where you flatten out. Like, you can't make any more money by yourself. And then you need to bring in team. And that's, you know, the million dollar, what I'm talking about, that esh, upper echelon. But that's a whole different level of skill set. And if you don't have the skill set to make money today and you want to go start a business and try managing people, good luck. Right? Good luck. Because you're going to run out of money. You're not, un not un going to understand it for yourself. And so depending on where you're at in that spectrum, Learn how to sell something that's great that you can believe in, that you can put your reputation behind, and then become a pro at it. Save your money, reinvest it back into assets. I mean, it's, it's a simple mental framework, but the one that everyone bypasses is, oh, I actually, I actually have to sell something to receive money back. Money, mm -hmm. right? And it's just an exchange of value. So, how much value are you bring into the world? And just so that everyone understands, selling doesn't mean, like you said, being a sleazy sales guy. Right. It just means that, oh, I know a lot about baseball cards because I bought baseball cards as a kid growing up. Okay. I can help. Um, 
I can help consult on which baseball cards I think is the best to buy. Or I went to college to be an accountant. No, okay. I can become an accountant for three or four small businesses in my community after work for 10 or 15 hours after week. And as per week, sorry. And as the, as I get more clients, I will take on two or three more um, accountants while I'm at work. Those two are working on the business for me until, until, until next thing you know, you're financially free. So that's, that's what selling is. It's not about being a sleazy sales guy. Right. It's, selling it's ice to an Eskimo. Right. And, and you know, pe- I hear that. Oh, he's a great salesman. He could sell ice to an Eskimo. And my initial response is, but he shouldn't sell he ice shouldn't. to an Eskimo. The Eskimo exactly. doesn't need ice. He's an Eskimo. He lives like, it's, so it puts such a dirty context around sales. And I was like, yeah. I don't want people that is going to sell ice to an Eskimo. I want people that are going to listen to what the person needs and provide a solution option. to their problem, not force my solution to their problem down their throat. And I think that's why I've become, I, we, I've become so successful is I don't talk. I listen and I mm-hmm. understand. And then I recreate the problem and I said, okay, hey, just so I understand, this is your problem. This is what you actually need help with. And then I provide the solution, right? Mm-hmm. As, a fo- as opposed to, and this is where I see salespeople mess up all the time, is they're providing solutions to a problem that they don't even know if the person has because, you know, it's like walking into a doctor's office and the doctor saying, you know, I think um, you need this. And he's like, you haven't even like done your tests on me. And that's yeah. where people, and I, I messed up there too, because I had this, I had this negative connotation, negative context around money. I grew up in the mm-hmm. Midwest and, and it was sort of instilled in me. Like we don't charge people, Zach, we help our neighbors. And I love yeah. it. Right. And I love it. And it's, you know, I still do that today. I help the, the neighbor, you know, all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, Zach's got bills. Zach needs like, got to put food on the table and keep the right. lights on. And so if you can't do that. I'm not actually being a positive contribution to my community because yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to need hand downs. I'm going to need this. And so mm-hmm. what I've learned is there is a time for that and mm-hmm. there is a time to charge and I charge people now. And that was, that was my own thing that I had to get over. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, and I, the way that I charge people that I make it such a no brainer. And if I don't deliver, I don't, I don't, I don't, take their money because I, I, I don't want to be that person that just is in it for the paycheck. Now I do need to get paid, but there's also, right. If I can't deliver, I don't, I don't want you going out there being upset. I don't want you spreading rumors about me. So, Hey, I'll just give you your money back or I'll work until I can figure it out. Right. And I've, I've always had great, every client I've had, uh, they, they love me for that. Now, have I had some clients I don't want, I don't want to work with anymore. I've learned that the hard way, right? Not every client, just because they have money is a client you want to work with because That's they true. have unrealistic expectations. Some of them are crazy, the, crazy. Right. But again, the only way I figured that out was by swinging the hammer, right? Figuring it, like going through. I was like, oh, I'm going to update my process. Do. I'm going to see if you qualify to work with me. And because I, I have boundaries, like right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want you to quickly just touch on learn and grow rich. Just tell us a little bit about that. And it wouldn't be fair. It's also not how we do things on a boardroom podcast for you to come on, be such an excellent consultant, be so qualified, do so well a job. And we don't give the guests, the art, no, not a guest, the audience an opportunity to contact you, to reach out and potentially work with you. So yeah. tell us a little bit about learn and grow rich. And let's say someone listening or watching would like to work with you. How would they go about contacting you? Yeah, and so learn is grow and grow rich is like my life's work because I I have this you know we were in Argentina I was traveling and I just as as you see the world your eyes open up and what you also see is that everywhere you go it's all the same right it's just they speak a different language they have a little but you know they they still have desires they're still that they're still a human being and I there's these just again founding principles of happiness and and life that I've seen. And I just turned it into my work. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a couple of books, uh, learn and grow rich. And then the mechanics of making money because it is mechanical. I can break it down into a framework. And so I, I said, there's all of these people out there 
selling programs, selling the step-by-step puzzle pieces, but people, they don't understand the totality of business. They don't understand money. Like what is money? Like explain to me what is money? Like most people couldn't even do that. And so I just want to start taking these life lessons that I've learned. And I love having these inquiries about life, community, happiness, business, whatever. I just love thinking about it. And so I want to share these with the world. And, you know, one of my mentors said, I want to be the best in business. And if I do my job right, I won't. I was like, what? he goes, because the next generation will outdo me because of what I taught them. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, that's that's purpose. That's, I, I want to be the best. But if I do my job right, I won't because I'm going to teach the next generation how to do it better. And if you really look at life today, there's so much success out there. There's so many people breaking uh, income revenue goals. And there's other people that aren't. But everyone has access to the Internet. Go watch YouTube and all of this stuff, these books. Um, And we're all the stuff that I'm learning. I I learn it through the wisdom of others. And so I just want to keep passing that stuff down. And one of my big things is, and I'm, I'm following one of my mentors on this, is he just gives his content away for free. I was like, how profound. And obviously, if you want his time, that costs money. But it's like, I see it like this. I want to give all of my wisdom, knowledge, content away uh, for at least, you know, just give it away, maybe a couple bucks here or there uh, for, for publishing costs. With the understanding that the better you do, the better I do. Because if you have money, you can now buy my stuff. You can now buy the business. Because I, I want to focus more. I focus more on growing businesses than I do with consulting, right? So I partner with businesses. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. The people, like, I, we have an education company. We teach people how to invest in real estate. We teach people how to start, scale, and sell businesses. I partner with people uh, in there. We have a financial services firm where we help you actually do help you start scale and sell businesses, then reinvest that money back into real estate and assets, tax mitigation, life insurance, infinite banking. If it has something to do with finance, we deal with it in our uh, financial services firm. And then we have a a business that we took on, uh, became partners on where we help people learn how to learn. One of the most profound classes I've ever taken. And at the end of it, I said, I want to partner with you. The world needs us. I I didn't I was I didn't know how to learn. You can learn how to learn. And so this evolution that I've gone through, I want to share it with others because in my belief, happiness comes from evolving. Happiness yeah. is a direction, not a destination. And you'll never arrive. As soon as you sure. think you are a man, it's like, what's next? Because I've had that. I've had the proverbial what's next. And so that's what learn and grow rich is about, is just constantly uh having the inquiry of of what's next what what makes me happy and then giving them the tools and the framework with proper expectations keyword with proper expectations so they don't think they're a failure because a lot of times i see people out there you know they're they they we as human beings if you know hu- the uh, of what it means to be a human being like we want the shortcut we want to, to take right, inherently it lazy, and that's just survival instinct, right? Yeah, here. I mean, if you if you look at you know we're lazy, but inherently, right? We 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 there's this whole there's this beautiful passage I read, but it was like it named all of these stuff, and that's that's the downfall of success because you have to put in the time, you have to become, uh, you know, for it to be rep, uh, replicatable. Every once in a while, you hear somebody win in the lottery or whatever, but that's not that's not replicatable. Why didn't they go um, broke after that? So. Right, they go broke out of that because they don't have the framework and the mindset. The mindset. And so learn and grow rich is about the framework and the mindset and the community. Keyword being community because you cannot do this alone. I've tried True. it. I've tried True. it. And you cannot do this alone. So creating that community, uh, we have calls a couple times a week for free where I'm on them. Uh, if you if you do join our community, I'm on calls every morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, where we talk anything business, anything real estate, anything taxes. Uh, and we have about 30 to 60 people on there from various different backgrounds. And it's such a brilliant conversation. You bring your problem, we solve it. We call it the boardroom call. It's it's funny because that's, you know, and it's like, oh, consider us your board of advisors because most people don't have that. Most people are out there trying to figure it out themselves. 
or they're taking cookie cutter advice that doesn't pertain to them, but they don't know where else to turn. And so it's about, you know, like giving customized solutions to a unique individual to solve a unique problem. Um, and what you, you know, it's, you do this and I've been doing these morning calls for eight years. And so you do enough. I learn from them. I learn to be a better speaker. I learn to be a better leader. I learn how to solve problems. Better. Communicator. Communi- yeah. And all these things. And so that's, that's what we're here to do is help people grow their business so that you can live an empowered life. So you can make sure the next generation is doing better and you can write a check to the foundation organization difference in the world that you want to make. Because if I have a million people writing a million checks, that's a far greater impact than just me and my wife writing a check. That's, a, right. that's true. I mean, the other, the other underrated part about it is that whenever someone else is successful, they don't need to look at what you have and be jealous and decide to kill you for it or rob you or anything like that. Right. So everybody like, wins, everybody is happy. Yeah, and they get that experience of winning. Mm-hmm. Like the experience, exactly. nothing, I, I will tell you, Nothing beats the experience of winning. And it's like, well, what game are you playing? Most people don't know what game they're playing. And so, you know, like I, I'm getting ready to go on a motorcycle ride from Alaska to Argentina for the sole purpose of it's an adventure and it's going to be hard. And then when I get down to Argentina, I'm going to have the experience of winning that game. Right. I, it took me 16 years to experience travel like i worked 16 years from the point i wanted it and then i won and i'm like oh my god i'm trying i am winning my game called travel it took me a long time to make really good money but i get to experience winning today for that and so it's like winning is fun if you're playing but you got to know the game you're in and so if you want to play with us if you want to win with us you can check us out at learn and grow rich dot net uh, mm-hmm. we, we, we have a, a variety of different services we offer uh, all around helping uh, businesses start, scale, sell, yeah. and then reinvest that money back into uh, real estate, tax strategies, Stop all market. of that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, what for, whatever it is, you know, build, build wealth. Yeah, and all and then stuff. we have personal development, uh, learn how to learn. Uh, my wife and I just started a couples, uh, couples training where, you know, we share our challenges as uh, not only a married couple, but a married couple that is in business together that travels the world. <laughs> right? That's, a, can, that's quite a list. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity there, but there's also a lot of uh, things that you have to overcome. And so that, that's where you can check us out. Learn and grow rich that net. And the podcast. And you can check my important. blog out. You can check my blog out at Indiana Ullman, like Indiana, the state, uh, Olman, O-E-H-L-M-A-N.com. That's where I write my blogs, my travel, my right. motorcycle stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have all those um, in the description and in the show notes. And as you mentioned them, I'm going to have them on screen. When you mention them, I'm going to bring them up now. But um, this has been wonderful. Uh, how did you enjoy your time on the Boardroom Podcast today? It's, man, I, I love it. You're such a kind person. Yeah. And Thank you. I could tell, you know, you can tell when people are in it to make a difference in the world. And I can tell just, just by your questions, you have a, an inquiring mind. You have like, you want to know you ask questions to understand, right. To, 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 and that's such a, such a fun conversation to be in. And so I have, it was an absolute pleasure. I'd love to come back anytime you want me. Of, of course, definitely. You've been wonderful. You've been exceptional. Um, just to continue wrapping up because I know we have a lot to get through. You had a great time. I know the guests that, why do I keep saying guests when it's audience? Wow. I know the audience would have had a wonderful time as well. The tradition that we have on the show is that when we have a a guest on and the guest had a good time, we know the audience is going to enjoy them. We'd like to ask our guest, who is one guest that you would like to see on the Boardroom Podcast in the future? And for this guest, we're going to try to get them on. What is one question that you would like us to ask them for you? So a guest and a question for the Boardroom Podcast in the future. So who would I like to see as a guest? Mm -hmm. And for that Um, guest, what is one question you would like us to ask them so you can get an answer for it? Oh, my gosh. That's Uh, a good one. Uh, 
so here, yeah. here's the guy that's coming to my mind because this guy has been a, a very influential in my life, Alex Ramosi. Ooh, you know, second oh, time. I listen. I follow that dude. He because a lot of the the quotes I've said today was from him. You know, we got people like um, there's just so many people that have influenced me. But he is, uh, you know, I I I really relate to him because he mm-hmm. he his authenticity and compassion yes. and grit so and direct. drive. And like perfectionist, but at the same time, don't worry about perfect. You know, there's just so many life lessons to learn from this guy because uh, he mm-hmm. achieves so much from a, a young age. And, you know, he he went through it, too. He, he slept on the floor of his gyms. He he's been, you know, had the partnerships fail and the money and, the, you know, all of the things that make you who you are, the lessons. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that would be the guy, Alex Ramosi. And the question would be is oh my god what makes you happy wow i don't think anyone has asked alex that actually yeah because he's such a driven man right he's like always pointed somewhere and always working on the mission and it's like what makes you happy maybe that that's like for me that's what makes me happy is the driving not the arrival but is the driving right so i would love to hear that and that fits in with us saying that it's not so much being happy like arriving at the destination of happiness that's important it's a continual journey of going there like what you do to get there that's important so yeah um, alex or Morsi, what makes you happy that's good thank you for such a wonderful time today zach you trust me you have been insightful inspiration brilliant educational and entertaining wonderful stories wonderful history i had a wonderful time it was my pleasure i did as well my friend thank you so much cheers